In this captivating video, we delve into the mystical dimensions of a very simple biblical story. Abraham extends his hospitality to three guests and prepares for them a meal. We only later learn that they are celestial beings, which implies they do not have the same digestive tracts as humans. So what exactly is the Torah trying to teach us with this very simple tale? Join us today as we unravel the spiritual significance behind this enigmatic encounter. Uncover the deeper meanings and symbolic interpretations that illuminate this profound understanding of the role food plays in our lives. Prepare to be captivated as we venture back to the Garden of Eden to shed light on some secret teachings that relate to our subject today. Today's Talmud promises to unravel the mystery of eating and leave you with a renewed sense of awe and wonder. So the very first time eating is mentioned in Genesis, it is when Hashem is showing off His beautiful garden. And when they come by plants and trees and vegetation, He says, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, etc., etc., etc. And go to the last part of the verse. It shall be for food. To you, it shall be for food. So this is the first time that food is mentioned. And it is uh, in Hebrew, it is le'achla. The achla means for your consumption or for your food. And it's 86, the same gematria as the word Elohim. So what? So the word Elohim and the word Achla, the first time food appears in the entire Torah, has the same gematria, has the same numerical value. So what's the significance? Well, the significance comes when you ask the question, who is the one speaking in the verse? Who is the one showing Adam his garden? Introducing the first human being to all the plants and trees and vegetation that is suitable for consumption. It's Elohim that is presenting. It's Elohim that is presenting the idea, introducing the idea of food to Adam. And yet, the word la'achla, food, on a level of essence, contains within it the energy and presence of God. So what is Elohim, what is God saying basically in this verse? He's saying that food is the way also to access me. Meaning I am giving all of this for you, but when you chew your food, when you taste your food, when you consume your food, make sure to have the presence of mind because you can feel my presence there. Blessing food before consumption is a way of not only expressing gratitude, but inviting the divine presence in our midst. So one other crucial point to make and to consider is that where does this whole idea of the spirituality of eating comes from? Again, it comes from Genesis. Where do we see this? Well, if you think about it, once upon a time, man and woman walked with God in the garden. We walked together. That means there was no separation. There was no awkwardness. There was no unfamiliarity. We were able to have a direct relationship, a clear, direct relationship with our Maker and our Creator. And not only with our, our Maker and our Creator, Hashem, Yitbarach, but also with the, the sacredness of, us, of self. We had a direct access to all the different parts of our soul, the animal, the feeling, the thinking, the intuitive, the divine, all were blossoming, all were evolving. Okay, and then something happened. We got separated from our true nature. We got separated from this spiritual utopia with a falling out from Eden, a falling out from paradise. And what was it caused by? So everybody knows it was caused by eating. So our rabbis, our holy sages say the following. They say, if it was eating that caused the separation and the fall, then it'll be eating that will be responsible for the restoration. Think about that for a moment. This is quite profound. The tikkun, meaning the karmic correction of humanity, of Adam, has to be done through 
mindful and correct spiritual eating. Eating in holiness is one of the ways that we recreate that bridge between the physical and the spiritual. Eating is not just a physical necessity, but also a spiritual practice. Food is seen as a vehicle for spiritual connection and growth. So next we have a story about Abraham, our father, the founder, right? Abraham Avinu. And it says that Abraham was sitting by Huayaish, Yosheb, Petach HaOhel. He was sitting at the uh, opening of his tent. And three passerbys, three guests came by. And strangers, guests, and Abraham waved him down because he wanted to offer hospitality. What was one of the first things he did when these three guests, these three strangers, entered his, his tent is he, be, he went and fetched some water for them and began bathing them. Afterwards, he prepared an elaborate feast for them. The commentators are a little, they find this story problematic. The fact that Abraham, not so much the fact that Abraham served them food, but the verse says that Abraham stood over them. He was watching and it says they indeed ate. So they really, really ate. Well, why is that troublesome? Why is that problematic for the commentators throughout history that these three men ate? And the answer is, is because they were angels. They were angels in disguise, later we learn, right? It was the angels Gabriel, Michael, and Raphael. They all came for a mission, right? And angels are, they can manifest as human being, but they don't have the physical system of a human being. They don't have the whole biological system of digestive system, etc. So it's angels can't eat like humans. When they, when the Torah says that they ate, the Kabbalists take this literally. Yeah, they ate, but they didn't eat as human beings eat. They ate, but they ate as angels eat. What does it mean? They ate as angels eat. How do angels eat? Well, the way these angels ate, the Kabbalists teach us is they were able to internalize, to digest, to receive the loving kindness that Abraham embodied. And that's what they were eating because angels eat, I shouldn't say eat, they feed off of mitzvot, off of holy acts. Anytime somebody performs an act that is kadosh, that is holy, this energizes all the good forces in the universe. And when someone goes into a place of uh, not unity and oneness and love and tolerance, but a place of agitation and conflict, antagonism and, 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 um, and anger and fear and self-doubt, which is the fragmentation of the great unity that God is, then that's feeding the klipot, that's feeding the other side, that's feeding the negative forces in the universe. So angels eat, angels feed off of kedusha, off of holiness. This, this gives them more energy to do their missions. And since there were three angels that were on a mission, the meal that Abraham prepare, prepared, not literally as in physical food, but his act of preparing, the transmission of who he was as a holy being, his essence of Abraham was transmitted into the food and the angels received it. The angels were able to benefit and be fed, so to speak, from the spiritual nourishment that was contained within the food that Abraham had prepared. And so here we learn that food is not only a biological, physical necessity, but it could also be a medium to transmit spiritual energy, intentions, and the spiritual ambiance of the one who's preparing the food and everything, all the love that they're putting into it, the same way a mother cooks a meal for her family, it's not just a physical thing, it's her language of love. And that's why that food for the family, mama's cooking becomes medicinal.
And that's why the children were nurtured into healthy, vibrant human beings. Setting positive intentions during the preparation, as well as before we serve the meals, can elevate the energetic qualities of the food. Which brings us to the next story or the next verse we're going to look in the book of Exodus. So this next verse from the book of Exodus has three parts to it. I broke it into three different parts. The first one says, you shall serve Hashem. The second, he will bless your bread and water. The third, he will remove sickness from your midst. The first question we have to ask is, in the same verse where it says that Hashem blesses your bread and water, why is there a connection with illness, right? And he says, because Hashem says, I will remove sickness from your midst, okay? Bekir becha, okay? So your midst means your, your midst, your center. So this is a very, this is the first insight is that the center doesn't necessarily mean the center of the people, that I'm going to remove illness from the community, but your center. And the second insight is that that means that there, that illness comes from something within ourselves. But the second insight comes from the Hebrew word for illness here is not the same one as you when you read about disease, when you read about, read about uh, tzarat and all of that, all the physical diseases and illnesses that, that the Bible talks about. This is a different kind of illness. So what kind of illness is this? Is this, this is an illness of the spirit. This is, uh, which is implying it's an illness of the, uh, the person's uh, emotional illness, psychological, things that trouble one within. So when a person uh, is, is uh, spiritually ill or emotionally or psychologically disturbed, they cannot find rest in their lives. They cannot find peace in their lives. So there's something that inside is off, right? And we look at modern society today and we see this illness is very prevalent. Okay, we see that this illness can be seen on the faces of most people, especially in the developed countries, in the countries that have wealth, right? So the big question that we need to ask is you have everything. You have more choice in today's age than in any, any other time in history. You have more of your needs, your basic needs are met. More today, the poverty is reduced more so today than any other time in history, yet read the faces of the people. Walk through the United States of America and you see, you'll see that the spirit is disturbed. They have an abundance of food like you could not believe, yet there is, a, um, there is starvation in the land. There is hunger, there is thirst, and this is what the verse is addressing. Okay, go back to the first part of the verse and you shall serve Hashem, your God. That means that everything is about God. You have to have an orientation in your life that where God is your center, where your higher power is partnering with you. So when God becomes that ultimate reality, then God and you invite God into the very act of eating, then the food, the basic necessities of bread and water are blessed by God himself. He doesn't bless the individual. He doesn't bless me. He blesses the food. He blesses the bread and the water. Why? Because it's nourishment. And here, as we were saying earlier, it's not just physical nourishment. Again and again and again, how many times do we have to repeat the same theme? It's spiritual nourishment that can be transmitted through the medium of food. And in this case, even the most basic food like bread and water. When God himself is the one blessing that, then that removes that spiritual, emotional illness from your midst, from your center. But when you have a conscious contact with a higher power, with God becomes your reality, he is the center of your life, he is the one blessing your bread and water, then that itself will remove that existential sickness from your midst. You're satisfied. And that's the one thing that is missing. This teaching is a missing puzzle piece to why we are not happy. We have so much we have more in our generation than any other generation before us. And it just grows exponentially. 
the amount of information, the amount of knowledge we have access to, the amount of channels and internet websites and music and everything, food, everything. Yet existentially we walk around like we're in some kind of spiritual desert where we're thirsty for water. <sighs> Let me so all wish you just the greatest blessings that we should continue to walk the path of life with health and blessing and strength and confidence. And please don't be a stranger to this channel. If you're not yet part of our tribe, don't forget to subscribe so we could be friends and we could see each other again and again. Until next time, shalom and blessings to you.